The podcast you're about to hear involves true stories, which may contain graphic content that is not suitable for children. Listener's discretion is advised. This is Esoteric Oddities. Hey, hey guys. guys. Uh, we have Kiko here with us. Our What's good friend up? Kiko in the studio. She's um, a great asset. And a great oh, thank ass. Thank you so much. I do have a great ass, guys. <laughs> yes. Uh, so how are you doing, Kiko? I'm good, you know. I'm just like, <laughs> I don't know. Living the life shooting right, shit. Exactly. You know? Yes, you should. So today's topic was brought about uh, to, due to the concerning news we're not going to get too political, but we all know the government has shut down. I don't know about when this comes out because we are pre-recording it. So hopefully things have changed by then. Uh, we're recording this a little bit more than a week in advance. It's like we're a week and three days. on top of our shit. We have our shit together. Yeah. That's me knocking on wood. But uh, our government could probably get their, get their shit together. Uh, but with that being said, uh, a lot of national parks were kind of you know, left unattended because park rangers, that's a government job, right? So we have places like Joshua Tree. You went to Joshua Tree, didn't you? I did briefly, yes. Did you love it? I it's did love it. It's, yeah, it's, it's getting trash. What is that? It's getting trash. <gasps> People were bringing chainsaws to the Joshua Trees at National Park and they were like chopping shit up. What? Yeah, this is literally like scary. This is like the purge. This was like last week. This is literally like the purge. This is probably for old trees. Week. But who even thinks of doing that? Like, oh, okay, no, 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 fucking shut down. I'm gonna not go just, chop down. Not just for Joshua Tree. Not just for trees. Like, think about it. Like, Can't if the go. This is a small space where the government, like, it's on federal grounds that nobody is technically in charge of right now since the government shut down so people are doing whatever the fuck they want what is it area Yikes. 51 people? yeah but i'm saying well area 51 isn't a national park oh god but, <laughs> it's fine you're fine but um but like what if it this is literally some purge shit where like a, they're getting a little taste of like freedom you can do whatever the fuck you want because it's federal land and there is no like that is so insane it's really insane system. to me that even national parks are government property like first of all like it's federal owned land how land. How, 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 and what, in what world does that make sense? Okay. So Give it back to the native people. <laughs> literally though. No jokes. That. Y- Never jokes. Right. Literally. <laughs> but we're actually talking about the national parks and uh, some of y'all may not know about the weird fucking shit that's been going okay, on. Okay. Why isn't this bigger? Because the shit is very strange. Uh, but yeah, so there's this weird shit that's going on for those of y'all who don't know, and this isn't something new, but people have been going missing in national parks for so fucking long. Okay, but long. like if you think about it, like national parks are so fucking huge. Also, there's no laws that they have a requirement to keep missing persons files because on it's basically federal the land. woods and then they hire people to just ride around on horses oh, for like $20 okay. a day. I love that you're bringing that up because that was a thought I had that it's so easy for people to get lost. But wait till you hear, I don't know about this Sarah's shit. stories, but wait till you hear about my stories about how it wasn't exactly in the woods where these people were going missing. Oh, God, no, and so. a lot of people are found alive. Some people are not so lucky. Um, Oh, there is like scary. there's this volume of books. I want to say it's six, but I think it might be less than that. But it's called Missing Four One One. Yes, I heard about Four One One. Yes, and it is it is written by this guy named um, David Politis, and he has twenty years of experience in law enforcement. He was on the SWAT team, and he was um, an officer against street in, in a San street Diego, crimes right? unit. Yeah, in a street crimes unit. Um, that's exactly right. Yes, BB. Ah. Wikipedia.org, baby. Yeah, basically, but it's um, fine. I research. So in these stories, we're just going to give you a little taste, a yeah, little lick a little of the taste. weird shit, but I'm just going to kind of go over. Uh, uh, they have collected over 2,000 cases that have mysterious and seemingly unexplainable circumstances that are within national parks. And like Sarah said, there is no law that requires the government to record missing people or keep statistics or on data federal land. on federal land. Why the fuck? That's so fucking Why? And also it's the go- like, it's just like, cause okay, they don't want to deal just with so that happens. shit also. It's the government. I have a theory. Can I wait, say it? Can we wait Experience. till the end? I want to wait till the end because the, the people okay. listening may not have any idea what the fuck we're talking That's about. True. So okay. let's hold yeah. off on theories till the end. Um, 
I'm just going to give a, re- a, a really quick like synopsis of the weird shit that's going on. And then I'm going to cover missing children. And then Sarah's going to cover missing adults. Um, and mine are in chronological order. I don't know. But how first. Gonna... But first. I'm doing my segment. We're still doing the segment. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. Oh, wait, wait. Here. This is this on that. <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. Um, yeah. So, like, do you guys have friends that you feel like just no. suck the energy out of you? Like, when you get home from hanging out with them, you're just like, I'm exhausted. Like, Are I, you subtweeting I have, me? I have nothing more to give. You know, you just need to leave those fucking people alone. Those people are trash. And it doesn't have to be that they're trash, like, in general, they could just be like not mixed well with your vibrations and your energy. So let those people go. It's gonna be fine. You'll they'll replace themselves somehow in your life, and that's that on that. It is not mine to care for or carry. Uh uh-uh. uh. And as empaths, I think we can all oh, yeah. agree. Shield Whoa. yourself. <laughs> Honestly, cleanse Lock thyself. Bitches. All right, so that's that on that. And back to the weird fucking shit in the woods. Sorry that's to have bizarre. <laughs> that's bizarre. <laughs> How bizarre! I hate saying I hate saying crazy. Cause I don't like, like using crazy either. So like I say also. bizarre, but like. But also, <laughs> but crazy. also <laughs> if the shoe fucking fits, man. <laughs> <laughs> Just like five minutes of laughing. Right. Sorry. Okay. So these vanished people, they. Uh, in situations have seemed to be like kidnapped or otherwise taken away by some sort of animal or some sort of entity. The missing 411, they had a documentary they were filming and they tried to get records and the government said it would cost them $1.4 million. To get records? And to that I say, I To thought, print papers? And to that I to say. To do your job? Literally. And to that I say. <laughs> but you guys are missing the whole thing. They didn't. They said they didn't have records. Oh. So they were like, we need $1 million to then, come up with some. <laughs> <laughs> Basically. <laughs> so like I said before, this shit did not just start. So mine are going to go into chronological order. This is one of the first ones that was recorded. However, who's to say that weird shit hasn't there was happened? There's a lot of kids that went missing. In I parts. know. That's scary because they're so big and you know how kids are. They just wander off. Like anything can fucking happen at any time. Some of them may not even have wandered. In August of 1897, a six-year-old girl named Lillian Carney went missing in Masardis, Maine, which is about 15 miles west of the Canadian border. She was out picking blueberries with her family when, according to her mother and father, Lillian had vanished right under their noses. So a preliminary search of the area was quickly expanded Uh, to over 200 searchers who were scouring the area and calling the little girl's name to no avail. On the third day of the search for Lillian Carney, 300 people had gathered to look for her. Uh, She was found by a man named Bert Poland. She was in the woods about two to three miles away from where she uh, had been last seen with her parents. Mm -hmm. Lillian was alive, but in a dazed trance-like state. When they asked what had happened to her, the dazed little girl replied she had been in a place in the forest where the sun had shone the entire time she was there. I read that story. Which logically didn't make sense as it had been mostly cloudy and she had been missing overnight. I cannot do. Weird, right? Yeah. So that's just one little case. So let's fast forward a smidge to 1938. This is Alfred Bilehart. So he was four years old. And he was camping in Colorado's Rocky Mountain National Park oh, with his Jesus, family Colorado. over the 4th Bad of vibes. July weekend. Drink your fucking water. Altitude is fucking crazy out there. <laughs> <laughs> so Alfred had gone with his father to bathe in the river near the Roaring and Fall Rivers. Uh, so from there, Alfred decided to join his two family members at a spot which is, was about 500 feet or 150 meters upstream from where he and his father had entered the river. So his father was 500 feet away from the cousins or the family or some. They were all just kind of hanging out there, space in between them, doing their own thing. So he decides to go, you know, hang out about 500 feet away. When everyone returned to camp, they realized that Alfred was missing. So a search began immediately, expanding to more than 100 Civilian Conservation Corps members within 45 minutes, but there was barely any sign of Bailhart anywhere. 
A uh, day after he disappeared, a couple was hiking about six miles away from Alfred's campsite, and they saw a little boy sitting in an area called the Devil's Nest. Ooh. Stop. At Mount Chapin. So the boy was alone and acting strangely. Chapin. He made a shrill noise and walked out to overlook the ridge before darting out of sight. So the couple that had seen him had recognized a photo of Alfred that was in the newspaper since he was missing, and they contacted the police stating they had seen the missing boy. So they contacted the park, who sent climbers to search the clifftop, but nothing was found. So there was a bandage that was found in an abandoned cabin nearby, and according to his family, it looked identical to a bandage that Alfred had been wearing when he went missing. It was collected as potential evidence and quote-unquote tested, but nothing ever came of it. But remember, this was 1938, so I don't right, quite right. know what, what they were testing. What tests you tested right now? What, right? <laughs> What's <saying>? available? <laughs> Um, so the search went on for 10 days and included 150 men plus bloodhounds, but nothing was ever found. Park rangers chalked up his disappearance to drowning. Although the body was never found, and there's no solid proof of this, Alfred Bilehearts is the first recorded drowning in Colorado's Rocky Mountain National Park. But what really happened to Alfred remains an unsolved mystery. Like, it's just... What's happening to these people? My thing is, okay, so you said 500 feet away. Mm-hmm. How did he get there? He Have walked. you ever seen the fucking quiet place and these white people left their kids behind them? And I was just so confused. They always did and they that. Couldn't what, talk. Like, they couldn't They set up talk, a trap. Yes, but like, why children. are your kids behind you? Why are they away from you in this environment? I am confused. I mean, technically, if it wasn't, we wouldn't have much of a movie with a plot. I get so. that, but like, we're talking real life 500 feet away at this point. <laughs> Like, it's just curious right. kids. It could have been whatever, like whatever's in that forest. It could have like a calling for children. Like you just never fucking know. Oh my and god, like that's so open and susceptible to they those are, things. Pure, so it's like, like speaking of they reality, have, like, fifth eyes. <laughs> <laughs> like it like, goes fucking six beyond. Six okay. Like the movie Mama. They could have uh, seen uh, Mama in the hello. Woods. Right, I'm saying Mama's out here collecting, collecting in her basket. Okay. All right, y'all. R.I.P. So, though, like honestly, all respect, all due respect. Oh uh, yeah, all due respect. Well, he's we don't know. He could yeah, still right. be out he there. He could be out right. That girl showed up. It's true. That little girl. Wow. Yeah. So this next one, I'm gonna show you guys a picture of. It's some weird shit. Oh, I don't so want this it. is Catherine <laughs> Van Alst, and this is in 19. 19- I read about all of these. Nineteen four. I told you not to read about kids. I. It was just. In the search, I'm sorry. Okay, well, pretend you didn't read it. Act shocked. Okay, so I this am was shocked. In 1946. So, in 1946, eight year old Catherine Van Alst was traveling with her family. It was her parents' 25th wedding anniversary. So, they were departing from Kansas City, and the family drove down south, down the highway, heading to their relative's house in Fort Smith, Arkansas, to celebrate the occasion. Now, okay, my first question, again, all due respect. The parents are like, it's our 25th wedding anniversary. Let's fucking drive from Kansas to our Kansas and celebrate with other people who don't care that it's our wedding anniversary. Literally, and bring our children in the mix. Well, she's eight years old, so it's better to bring her than to leave her behind. But I get what you're <laughs> She would have left. Oh, um, my God. <laughs> so the trip was nearly 300 miles. Clearly an important occasion. Uh, so along the way, they came upon, get ready for it, Devil's Den State Park. All of these fucking- Devil's Devils, Den. Right? Devil's They backbone. have a name for a reason. Devil's Stay away. Crust. Uh, okay, so jumping back. Okay, so the Devil's Den State Park was in Arkansas's Ozark National Forest. So it was only 40 miles away from their Fort Smith destination, but everybody was kind of tired. So they were like, hey, you know, let's take like a mini side vacation. Like our family can wait. We're going to we're going to get like a little cabin and we're going to sleep over because we're still 40 miles away. Okay, fine. So. In this forest, there was a campground, and it was an assortment of 17 wooded cabins, and they were built uh, by the same dotted acreage, so they were, like, pretty evenly spaced out. It wasn't just kind of, it wasn't random. Um, So the park featured a scenic man-made rock dam where Catherine played with her brothers. So while her father was taking a nap at the cabin, she remained at the dam with her other two siblings. After she got bored, she headed back to the cabin alone, wearing a swimsuit with no shoes, but she never returned. Mm. For six days, a search party looked for the missing eight-year-olds. 
Then on the sixth day, almost a full week after she went missing, a man named Porter Chadwick, who was part of the search party, found her over 30 fucking miles away yeah. from where she went How missing. How is she getting there? He Without t- shoes? He told the Pittsburgh press that when he found her, she walked um, out of a cave and said, here I am. <gasps> Okay, that's some fucking she knew. That's dark some shit. shit. Right, she walked out that cave. They like said, the they're Netflix looking for show you. Go dark. check in real quick and be right back. Also, that David guy has said, like, it's some Stranger Things shit. Like, you guys. Like wait, the TV wait, show? But have you guys ever seen, not even Stranger Things, have you seen dark. the German show Dark? It's yeah. the right. same stuff. Yeah. Like, it's yikes. literally, I feel also, like Dark was way more intense it was, it was. than Stranger Things was. <laughs> Hello. Did y'all hear <laughs> Okay, nothing but a tiny mishap. It's uh, fine. But you guys, I'm going to show you a picture of this little girl. Mm, I, don't, I don't think okay, so. so. I let me sleep alone now. Let me finish this. So when asked what happened, she never fully remembered. All she could remember was that her last few footsteps when she left the dam, everything that followed that remains a hazy mystery. All right, so just imagine... This girl walks out of a cave and says, here I am. You guys, if you want to see this picture, go on Instagram and Twitter. I'm scared. I'm scared. (gasps) She she walked out with the doll? No. That was at the hospital. But that's what she looked like and that's what she was wearing. Wow. Oh, no. Look at her face. Look at her eyes. Why do they look like that? Here, But she looks grown. That's the crazy thing. It looks like she's aged in her face and not in her body. Anywhere else. Some scary shit. Here I am, Yikes. bitch. I'm Here good. I am. But I mean, at least <laughs> she Maps? survives. Uh, okay. So then there is Keith Parkins. This is in 1952. So on April 10th, 1952, two year old Keith Parkins ran around his family's barn in Ritter, Oregon. When his guardians noticed he was missing, they called the police who gathered over 200 people who split up to search for the missing toddler. So three miles away from where he went missing, searchers found infant footprints in the snow. So they, the footprints seemed to like start out of nowhere and then the tracks just like stopped as if like, like where would he have gone? Like Spanish. someone was flying and like just like appeared and up. then like just like swooped back up. So 19 hours later, his body was found eight miles away from the tracks. He was laying face down in the snow on top of a rocky cliff in a national park, his clothes laying next to him. Though he had been out in the freezing cold, nearly naked for over 19 hours, he was still alive, but had multiple scratches all over his body. He, he lived. Ha. It's aliens. Oh, we'll get to some theories, baby. Uh, okay, and then there is Larry Jeffrey, 1966. In 1966, six-year-old Larry Jeffrey of Henderson, who was partially deaf, was hiking with his two older stepbrothers in the rugged 12,000-foot Mount Charles like, Range. Like, why are you bringing a child there? I know, right? 1966, a How crazy many, time. Uh, feet, did you just say? You said feet, 12,000? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not 1,200, 12,000. Um, So it was near Lee Canyon in Nevada. When his stepbrothers looked back, Larry was gone. So there was a massive 16-day search by 1,000 men that was led by former Sheriff Ralph Lamb. Uh So here's a quote from the sheriff. He said, quote, We walked shoulder to shoulder but couldn't find him. There are no large predators per se, so we don't worry about mammals taking them. He was in a fairly remote area and there was no vehicular access, so there's no car abduction. The boy just walked into oblivion. End quote. So, crazy, right? In my head, though, I would have to see the terrain. Right, to, like, understand. Yeah, because in my head, it's just, like, if it was so high up, he could have, like, fallen. Right. But it sounds like he wasn't on, like, a rocky edge of a mountain. It sounds like he was, like, really fucking high up, but it was, like, a plain area. Like, it was a flat land. I feel like does it affects, like, kids in any way being that high up in That's altitude. True, like, he... you know how you'll start to hallucinate when you're too, like, far up and, like, not hydrating yourself. And... That, that's a plausible, that's a plausible thought. 
they could, <laughs> no, no. I'm just saying it could be because maybe, maybe there is especially for being weird. so young. Because yeah. I right, I don't and know. it's not it's cutting off oxygen to your brain, so like that your body isn't used to. So that's a plausible right. thought. Yeah, I still think it's aliens. <laughs> right, death. Right. So then there is Dennis Martin. Are you guys keeping track of this? Is like what, like number six? I could probably be wrong, but like these are. I, I'm just giving you like Sarah's going to get into the adults. I'm just giving you a couple a, of like the children. Literally That's a couple insane. of children. They said something about like six thousand people go missing every year or something. Well, I don't. Yeah, I don't know and because there are no records. Literally, though. So True. this is in 1969. So six-year-old Dennis Martin was camping. Uh, near the Tennessee North Carolina state line, and he was with his family in the summer of 1969. Like that song, it was a the summer, summer of 69. Yeah. <laughs> um, but unfortunately for him, it's not going to be as great. So yeah. it was an annual Father's Day tradition. So all of the men in Martin's family headed to the Smoky Mountain National Park to camp and hike. So Dennis and his brothers planned a prank on the adults. They were each going to jump out from different sides of the campsite to scare them. You know, practical joke, everybody would jump out, it'd be funny, but the laughter quickly ended when they realized that Dennis was missing. Yikes. So uh, the family, park rangers, and other hikers spread out to search for Dennis almost immediately, but he was nowhere to be found. So that evening, there was heavy rainfall, which is not exactly ideal when you're looking for a missing boy, especially if that not missing boy is out there in right. the fucking rain. So search efforts included a separate search by the National Guard and Special Forces, but they all found no trace. So again, the heavy rains during the first day's search, um, they definitely fucked up the efforts. And there was a heavy mist for the next few days. There were up to 1,400 people involved in the search effort. Whoa potentially obscuring possible clues, especially if um, not all these people are professional, which is something to keep in mind with all of them. I mean, it's one thing to have like the National Guard and Special Forces, but if you're just having hikers search for them, they don't exactly right, they don't know, know what, what to they're look looking for. for. Um, da, 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 da. Okay, so footprints were found in an area, but dismissed being Martin's. However, a shoe and a sock were also found. Uh, there were more than a thousand searchers that continued to look after that. The search for Dennis became the largest in the National Park Service history. One of the people searching was park ranger Dwight McCarter, who had successfully tracked down hundreds of missing persons, including young children. McCarter was a seasoned tracker, and he was struck by the complete lack of any sort of evidence that Dennis was missing. Dennis seemed to have disappeared completely, leaving, leaving no trace at all, and his disappearance is still a mystery. That is so insane. Isn't I don't it? know, y'all, these goblins, witches, and ghouls be snatched up your children. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, listen, literally. these children are children. gone. So then 1971 is Douglas Legg. So he was eight years old, and Douglas Legg and some of his family were heading out for a hike in the Adirondack national forest preserve um when his uncle spotted poison ivy and told doug to put on long pants to protect himself so doug's like okay cool i'll go put on my pants so he walked back to the cabin which mm -mm. wasn't too far away they said it was a straight shot you could turn around and literally see their cabin it wasn't oh wasn't know. far away and this is during daylight but doug Does it matter? doug never returned you said it was during daylight yes unlike a lot of the kids who had gone missing in national parks Doug was very familiar with the woods. His family owned the cabin that they were staying at, and the family members described Doug as a mini woodsman. So they all hiked together very often, and Doug's disappearance sparked one of the Southern Adirondacks' largest searches and rescue search and rescue missions, with more than 600 people searching in the woods. But Doug left no trail. So the family became desperate and began suspecting each other and even their friend of a. What was that? Did you hear that? I heard this, but then I heard something shuffle, like something bigger shuffle, right? Okay. <laughs> the family became more desperate and began suspecting each other and even their friends of abducting Doug, but the police Damn. were certain that the mini woodsman had simply gotten lost. To this day, he has never been found. Cause mania. But like, how far can you go? I don't, I don't know. Like... I feel like, especially as a child, you can get so confused with your environment. What? You hear I, yeah, I hear that. But as a child, yeah, you can get so confused with your environment. Like, you think especially you know what's woods. up, and then it's 
It's right. not. Everything what's looks up. the same. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Look, another tree. <laughs> All right. So then we're getting closer to, you know, nowadays. What would you call it? Today's? I love that. The uh, 80s, yeah. 90s, and today. So this is in 1990. This is the, uh, the case of Casey Holiday. So on October 14th, 1990, at 10 a.m., 11-year-old Casey Holiday went missing when he was walking his dog near Alder Creek in St. Marie's, Idaho. He was a developmentally disabled child, and Casey had gone missing without a trace just as a storm had sprung up. And search dogs had not been able to pick up on his scent. Uh, Of course not. Unfortunately, he was finally found after an extensive search lying in a creek bed without his shoes. But he was all these kids miss they're missing their shoes. Yeah. But he was alive. He (gasps) was at um When the boy was asked what happened to him, he seemed dazed and confused in a trance-like state babbling nonsensically. Uh, He had no recollection of where he'd been or where his his shoes had gone. Of course not. I wonder, like, if there's anything, like, about that, like, children getting lost in the woods and, like, always missing their shoes. Yeah. Like, if there's some type of, like, demon or something that, like, has something to do with that. Yeah. A shoe goblin. Uh, okay, I've got a couple more. So this one is something else. So this was 1999. This was one of the most popular cases. This was the case of Jared Adadero. So in 1999, three-year-old Jared Adadero's older sister, Jocelyn, had plans of going on a hike with a Christian group. So Jared wanted to go really fucking bad. So he begged his father, Alan, who initially said no, but after some, some convincing Alan gave in knowing that the Christian group was a responsible group of both teens and adults. So Mm -hmm. Jared joined his sister and they went hiking in the Comanche Comanche. I'm sorry. Comanche. I'm going to say Comanche Comanche peak wilderness in Northern Colorado. They decided to take a trail called big South. At some point, Jared got separated from the rest of the group and walked down a small trail towards some rushing water. There, he found two grown men who were fly fishing. So the spot was like a rena- a world renowned like right. spot and for it was fly open. fishing. Mm-hmm. And the three year old boy who was alone asked the two grown men if they had seen any bears on the trail. The two men were confused. They said no, they hadn't. Uh, Jared said something else. Then he turned around and began walking down the trail alone. Neither of the men stopped him. Or questioned why the fuck a three-year-old boy was walking through the wilderness alone. What year was this? 1999. Oh my god. For real. Like you weren't like, "Mm, where's your your parents? Right? (laughs) Like we're two grown men out here doing this shit, and you're just okay. okay. See you later. No bears over here. I don't know. Maybe next time. Billy, I think I saw a tarp. Is that is that a fish? A tarp? Yes. That might just be a tarp. No, a carp. 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 I just saw a tarp. (laughs) Don't. A tarp you can use that for your (laughs) camping tents. Yikes. I'm never going camping after these stories. Are you joking? I did. I love camping. I've never been camping. However, I did drink a lot and then I passed out on my friend Amanda's deck and I felt I like woke up the next morning. It was like camping because I slept overnight outside. Yeah. No, skr. I wouldn't do that either. I am terrified. Okay, I so love, I love cabining. Let yeah. me correct the cabin. Okay. Even that is scary. I don't know. I like it. I've covered too many it stories. It is scary, yeah. but like I don't know. The Keddie cabin. Like it. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay, so when Jocelyn and the group noticed Jared was missing, they called Alan, which is the father, yes. who drove as fast as he possibly fucking could to the hiking trail in the national park. Alan called search and rescue, and over 65 people were sent to look for the missing three-year-old. The search lasted for eight days straight, 24 hours a day. It wasn't the same people. They, like, you know, rotated changed out. out. Yeah, they rotated him. But it was for eight days for 24 hours a day. So eight days straight. And it's a three-year-old, like... Yeah, so they used dogs, they used helicopters, the whole fucking shebang. I'm just fucked up that these men didn't ask <laughs> anything. Right. Okay, wait, wait. So you're going to get even more pissed because um, there was not a single trace of him. Then a few days later, Jared's father, Alan, found out through a radio about these two fishermen. On the radio were these two fishermen like being interviewed, and Alan, the father, had not been told by Did any the- authority. 
did the like fishermen the like fuck? find anything weird about that? They didn't question it all. No, they just went on no. about their fucking business. Like, didn't they get interviewed though? They did, but they didn't say nothing. Hey, I thought it was really weird that this small boy was walking around by himself. Didn't yep. say anything they didn't though. Think, they, yeah, kept they didn't, fishing. They didn't think it was weird enough for them to be like, "Hey, where's your guardian?" Out in a fucking like what? This little boy is asking for bears. You should be like, no, where's mama bear? <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, let's find them first. Literally. He'll go to anybody. <laughs> okay, so four years later, 550 feet above the trail where he was last seen, hikers came across a tooth that belonged to a child Ooh. as well as a child's skull. Oh, my God. As it turns out, unfortunately, they belonged to Jared. His pants were on the ground inside out along with his sweatshirt. His shoes were also nearby untied near the rest of the clothes, but didn't show much wear from being outside for four fucking years in the wilderness. Now, some accounts of this say they looked brand new. They did not look brand new. You can actually see pictures of them. I'll put them on our Instagram and Twitter, but they do not look like they were outside for four years consecutively. Right. Also, the shoes again. Yeah, the shoes again. His clothes were intact. Now the arm. Also, of... the clothes kind of too. They're yeah. all like yeah. semi naked. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. So, um, the arm of his sweatshirt had a minor tear in it, um, but there was nothing major. His pants had no holes in it. Uh, nowhere did it show any sort of animal attack. There was no blood found. However, the shirt he wore under the sweatshirt was never found. So where his remains were found was a massive fucking hike. You have to use your hands. Like you have to literally use your hands to oh, climb shit. up boulders in a rocky right, terrain. So he could have never got there. So what's And he- all they found was a tooth and the skull. What about and his else? clothes and his shoes. Oh. Yeah. Uh, so what's even more fucking strange was that when they were filming a part of this missing 411 documentary, I think it was a little bit before they actually filmed the actual documentary. Um, but the author, uh, David Politis, was up there with a camera crew. They actually found a Rubik's Cube next to where his oh, shit. shit was found. And it looked like it had been in the wilderness for years. Like where it would normally be colors on it. It was like this gray, like it kind of looked like stone. Y'all. I'm putting this shit on Yikes. Instagram and Twitter oh, okay. at Esoteric Oddities on Instagram. Was Esoteric Oddity on. T- you can't tell because all the colors oh. are gone. It's so fucking that would be like fucking ancient, crazy. right? So, uh, police determines that Jared's death was caused by a mountain lion. Refusing to believe this, Alan tried to get the FBI involved, but since the incident occurred on a national park, it was out of their jurisdiction, and to this day, the case remains unsolved. That's so crazy. I literally, like, animals work in a very similar way. Like, if a mountain lion is going to eat this boy, they're going to the do it on in one spot. Like, yeah, but, all of the bones are going to be there. And, yeah, there's going to the be blood? blood on the clothes. The, the clothes like, are not torn. He's not going to take all of his clothes off right. to be eaten willingly. Like, right. that's not no, okay. going to happen. <laughs> yes. However, there could be, like, a... there. I'm just thinking of this now. A different theory of, you know, putting some sense to this is maybe, you know, when you get like delirious or sometimes you get um, like hypothermia and you get really, if you're really, your body's actually really fucking cold, but it feels like it's really fucking hot. He could have gotten that and taken his clothes off and then possibly an animal attacked. But that would mean that he would have had to like taken his clothes off and hung out where his clothes were, been attacked where his clothes were. And And his tooth and skull would have had to been out there. Also... Where like his That's shoes? Like, where's the rest his... of the bones, though? Nothing was torn. Yeah, exactly. Where the fuck are the rest of his bones? If it's just the top, a tooth and ha- like the upper part of his skull. That is terrifying. Nothing. Just else. the upper part. Just, of it his... was like like if you were to wear a hat and just take a saw to where the hat line is. It's just the top. This that part sounds of the like cranium. a scalping. That sounds like it was kind of big though. Like it, and it was kind of straight across too. That's what I'm saying. It sounds like he got scalped. I don't know if scalped because it's like, it's like a little bit. Isn't more it than, like right here? They like go right across the top. I don't know. Scalping I don't have any sources. I don't oh want to find out. Spooky. Uh, yeah. I but don't know. Just coming up with some theories. You know, I'm still wearing my tinfoil hat. I like to take it off and think like a normal person every now and again. Fuck your normal. <laughs> okay. So here is 2004. Oh, getting close. This is David Gonzalez. So at eight o'clock in the morning... In, in in July, 
2004, nine-year-old David Gonzalez asked his mother if he could have the car keys to get a box of cookies that was sitting in the backseat of the car. So their car was only 50 yards away, which is 46 meters. Uh, so his mom watched him as he walked to the parked car. He walked around one side of the car. They were in a parking lot. Uh, at a campsite. So this wasn't like in the middle of the woods uh, at Big Bear Lake in Northern California's San Bernardino National Forest. And he walked around the car and was never fucking seen again. So he walked around the car around the car and he was never seen again. She could like see him walked around the car gone. So his mother reported that she heard no sound at all. Though she did see a beige truck that was leaving the campground, get the campground around that time, but nothing seemed really shady she about it. It was just something, right. something noted. Um, while a search party began, detectives interviewed all registered sex offenders in the area and took statements from most of the people who camped at the site and determined that he had been abducted. The cookies that David was looking for were still locked in the back of the van, so he never actually made it to the car once he made it around. Wow. So rescue teams in San Bernardino County scoured the woods for David. They found no signs of a struggle or the boy. The search went on for nine days, but rescuers never found him alive. Almost a year later, hikers stumble upon the boy's remains about a mile from the family's campsite. It was David, and only about 25% of the boy's bones were recovered. No. Authorities chalked it up to a mountain lion attack. But bitch, how the fuck is a mountain lion going to silently drag a nine-year-old boy That's a right. mile okay. without yeah. making a sound or leaving blood or signs of a struggle? There were people at the campsite. It was a parking lot. Okay. Also, later, I'm going to get into some statistics about mountain lions. If you guys are thinking that it's animals, you can continue to think that it's animals. But you boys get after Sarah tells her shit, we're going to get into some statistics. So this is my final story in 2013. 2013. Okay, and these are not all the cases. Just a reminder; no, these are just a little so taste. So, in the summer of 2013, two-year-old Amber Rose Smith vanished from right in front of her home in now Nuevo County, Michigan. According to her father, he had been watching her play with the family's two dogs when he stepped inside for a moment to use the bathroom. When he had gone back outside, she was nowhere to be seen and would not respond to her name being called. You don't leave your kids. I'm saying. Uh, especially a two-year-old. Uh, the dogs appeared not long after without Amber. An extensive search involving hundreds of volunteers and emergency workers was launched to no avail. And the next day, she was found about two miles away from her home. She was alive, standing in the middle of the road nope. that had already been searched. She was unable to express what happened to her, but she definitely seemed to be in a state of shock and disorientation. Disorientate. Disorient. Dish. She was disheveled. I love that. Um, it was odd, though, since the two girl had somehow managed to navigate her way through thick wilderness in frigid temperatures. And this shit was overnight. So one officer named Brian Boyd, who um, was involved in this, he said it was very fucking weird. He said, quote, it's hard to imagine how a two and a half year old can survive that distance through the woods through that kind of temperature. There's some that aren't convinced she walked that entire distance. Maybe she was dropped off. Those things we might have to determine in the future. End quote. And that's like all we really know. And it's so weird because I was, when I was doing research, you can't find a lot of shit on this stuff. Yeah. It's very like a s small paragraph. Yeah. And there's like one, I, I think there's like one or two that are like bigger cases, but, right. um, but Oh, I don't want to jump into my theories. I want to let you do your thing, but keep some of these things in mind because uh, I've got some theories. All right. All right, Sarah, bring it home. All right, here we go. Adults. John Devine was a 73-year-old hiker, and I know what you're thinking, like, oh, 73 years old. Like, how is he hiking? My grandpa I've could seen, fucking right. do that Yes. Okay. Yes, keep that body in shape. Okay. I've seen some older hikers. I love old men. Just kidding. Oh. Um, <laughs> Jeff Goldblum, though. Holla oh, at me. Yeah. <laughs> He's such an interesting character. He if really, you watch him, he an is yes. very interesting. I can't. I can't get I a can't, read. I can't. <laughs> like, I think he doesn't like understand to the extent of how like popular he is. <laughs> That's probably why he's like that. He's, 
he just like scats a lot. Have you seen? <laughs> oh my god, wait. Who was that? Um, fucking. Oh my god, Kim Cattrall. Kim, you guys, right now, look up Kim Cattrall scatting. Do you remember that? I would quote wait, her wait. all the fucking. Oh my god, hold on. It's Intermission. Happening. I don't. Hold on, everybody. Intermission. We're just gonna take. Everybody's missing. People are dying. We're just gonna take a quick intermission to hear Kim Cattrall scat. Yeah. Yama kipiebo, sedere for cable, wind dog Latin he quotes. Uje, suffer, serai! Well, he bit all the he dogs and winked at all the she dogs. The town never knew such a hullabaloo as that little dog raised till the end of that day. I'm scared! Wait, she tried it. Does she, she tried think it. she does she think that's what it is? Let her live. This is also taken in like maybe two thousand one. Um, it's her and her that's husband. That's no excuse. <laughs> Get Scatting has been around for forever. Okay. <laughs> I think she jazz tried, like, is revolutionary. She tried fucking laying down some tracks. She was oh, like, Oh no! <laughs> she said, I'm the I'm the new Lil Kim. Right. <laughs> Lil Kim Katrina. She said, "Scooby to bop up." Who? <laughs> Because <laughs> oh that wasn't it. That's not it. <laughs> John Devine was a 73-year-old hiker who lived in Sequim and visited the Olympic National Park in Washington on September 7th, 1997. He was said to be an experienced hiker and had um, wanted to go to a climb. Uh, this climb was a 6,796-foot high um, Mount Baldy in the Olympic National Forest. And he wanted to hike the Maynard Burn Trail, which is extremely steep and rugged. After he didn't show up, after the hike was done, as planned, his family reported him missing to the authorities. This, uh, it, he was alone? Yes. This already scares me because this is some shit my father would do. I know, oh, right? My, my father. It'll be fine. Yeah, my dad, because he does this. My dad has literally, like, he's taken trails from his place. Mm-hmm. Uh, which y'all listening don't need to fucking know exactly. <laughs> no, you don't, you don't need, need to, to know, know the my coordinates. Dad. He he literally has ran about sixteen miles to a destination and then sixteen, yeah, 16 miles, miles back. Yeah, but like think about the shit it's that can alone happen. and it's scary. My, yeah, my dad's healthy, but like also he pushes his body to the limit. So like yeah. someone like this, that's already scaring me because like my dad would do shit like he would be stubborn and love you dad i know my dad's listening to this love you dad but like please don't do this because he would be stubborn enough to like want to do it by himself and like well at least you know that he's like healthy enough and like able to like yeah but you know you never know what's gonna happen you never know if a fucking alien's gonna snatch him up too you never know if your heart's just gonna give the fuck out right because that's how people when it snows a lot like y'all when we're recording this we're supposed to have a huge snowstorm tomorrow when it's snowing like older people tend to fucking like shovel snow and then have a heart attack because it's it's, it's so heavy cold. i have it's, not known that. well not yeah not just not it is so cold but not just that but it's like think about it you're you're working your body and lifting shovel lifting shovel and older people like you don't they think it's like a simple task and but you have a fuck it's heart attack weather if the snow is it, you listening if it snows by you and sure, it's heavy right. especially heavy fucking snow help your parents help your neighbors especially if they're older folks i always not to fucking toot my own horn but Choo-choo. sarah sarah was talking for about 2.5 minutes so we're just gonna spin it back to me because i'm so going to heaven because i always <laughs> shovel my neighbors um driveway just saying <laughs> I love that for you <laughs> thank you i want everyone to go follow me and DM me and tell me that i'm going to heaven thanks just sorry, I wanted to make this about me, not this man who's missing. <laughs> it's oh God. so fun, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, kidding. Oh, my God. So quiche. Um, so uh, a search party was called, and during the search, a Bell 205 A1, it's a rescue helicopter. Thank you. Um, it was searching, and it crashed, and it killed <gasps> three people and injured five at um, a 5,000-foot level at Mount Baldy, 20 miles south of Port Angeles. Do they know what happened? No. Was it like, <gasps> do you think the government was it like, was probably shut, some it shit. Down, it, um, shut it down, shut it down? That's scary. It fell shortly after taking off from the mountainside. Um, Kevin Johnson, he was the pilot. He was 35. Um, Rita McMowan, she was 42. She, she was one of the search volunteers. Um, she trained dogs to help with rescue missions. She passed. And um, Taryn oh, no. Hoover, she was 31. And she was a park employee um, that also did not make it. Officials say the chances of finding John alive were dropped severely due to um, snow and cold that have ripped through the mountains. Um, 
The area was steep and rugged with super thick bushes. Um, Sergeant Don Kelly of the county sheriff's office, um, which coordinated the search with the National Park Service, said if he was walking around up there, we would have found him by now. Unfortunately, John Devine was never found, and that was another strange disappearance in the Olympic National Park. Okay, that's fucking crazy. I'm saying um a lot. And also, that kind of... Okay, I was going to... Um... I was going to bring this up a little bit later, but I'm going to bring it up up now, baby. So Jared, the little boy who went missing with the two fishermen that saw him, Mm -hmm. there was a fucking plane crash at the site like around where his body was found that killed 10 people. It's so crazy because also I've like regardless of like this situation and everything we're talking about right now, like from prior experience and research, I've found that um, like airplane crashes as well, like in areas that are like not no. beacons but like just like weird like no spiritual. no zones yeah exactly yeah 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 oh like i have zone. one of those oh god i'm, getting, I'm like gonna get into it right now bermuda triangle i went through Yo, the bermuda I'm gonna triangle get into that right now that's so crazy i'm wet here i went through the <laughs> bermuda triangle <laughs> that's so what a great segment you did <gasps> and you're here and i'm here unless i'm a doppelganger oh you you're a, you're, Honestly, you're like, a clone you could be clone aid. Real Jonathan could be frozen up somewhere off the coast. I of hope he still looks clone youthful because if he's frozen, he's still 18 years old and probably still drunk from the first time he legally drank Ooh, on international waters. Love that for you. Uh, but you guys, uh, if you're looking it up, it was a B-17 wreck uh, that happened years prior. And it was around the area where Jared's um, where the the pieces were found. Stephen Kubaki uh, went missing in February of 1978 while in um, skiing Lake Michigan. Okay. Um, The area is also known as the Michigan Triangle. I'll get into that after I'm done. Um, So Kubaki skis and uh, ski poles were found abandoned upon the snow and ice and his tracks were said to have just suddenly stopped as if he had walked out of reality with his backpack on the ground nearby. Since the location where he had vanished was close to Lake Michigan, it was assumed that he had somehow fallen into the lake and drowned. Uh, Despite the numerous searches, no one had any clue of where he had gone, and he seemed to have just stepped off the face of the earth. That was until 15 months later on May 5th, 1979, when he strolled right up to his father's house. Oh! Hey! nothing happened. When Kubaki was asked about what had happened to him or where he had been the whole time his answer didn't seem to make any sense he claimed that he had suddenly woken up to find himself in a meadow around 40 miles from his father's house and that he had been wearing clothes that were not his along with small unfamiliar along with a small unfamiliar bag laying next to him containing maps that were not his either ew um, other than that, he had no recollection whatsoever of what had happened to him over the past 15 months. And indeed, he, um, he was under the impression that no time had passed at all. Wait. Okay. But can we also throw in the theory of fairies? Have you ever like heard about like fairies, like sweeping people up and like. Oh my God. I'm such a fucking idiot. I was, I literally thought you were talking about like a fairy like oh no i'm talking about fairies wings mushroom circle type like Like in the meadow waking up like what the fuck happened true type shit yes like Like, we need to throw that fucking theory in because that's like a thing that well i i don't personally know any fairies but (laughs) you know me bitch you know me bitch But I hear that's literally a thing that happens is like they'll get like swept up in the moment, like, you know, being off and alone by yourself in the wilderness. And like these fairies will like basically put you in a trance and like oh. you like don't age. You don't remember what happens. I want one of those. Like, it's like this okay, whole crazy thing. But also it could have been like some mental break. True. He didn't have any mental <clears throat> health issues. And he ended up getting his like doctorate after this. Not oh, that that matters, shit. but like. Okay. He like right. I was mean, all it, there. Yeah, but not not that that matters. It, it could have literally just been like a mental break. That's true. Um, so, just I'm just you know we're covering well, he, all bases. Like, he from, refused to talk about it from mental breaks. He refused to talk about it after. Yeah. This? From mental breaks to I'm fairies. I'm telling you, those fairies were like, bitch. Hey. <laughs> you better not say shit. He said the only other clue that, that he would have is that he felt like he had done some running when he woke up. 
Like he was like he like felt short like of he breath. was running. Yeah, just like I was running. He was probably I was, like, sore running through the years for honestly. fifteen months. So the entire area of the Michigan Triangle has history of strange activity to begin with. In 1921, for example, um, the Roosevelt ship was discovered overturned in Lake Michigan. All 11 of the crew had seemingly vanished. Um, there was damage to the ship, but no indication of what happened. Ooh, we're just going to slide. You just casually slid that in. I need more. On April 28th, uh, 1937, Captain George Doner was on a boat on Lake Michigan when he vanished from his cabin with the doors and windows locked from the inside. When the concerned crew um, broke the door to enter, he was nowhere to be found. There was no signs of an exit out of the room. <gasps> Where did he go? That fucking Michigan Triangle, man. Okay, but I literally just looked it up and it's like fairy abductions are like a real thing do they take happens. your shoes it says real traditions thing, um say that abductions take place to wait hold on wait pause 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 i just lost pause for I the reading. cause i'm so sorry people tend to disappear near boulder fields um Ooh. the fairies are said to live inside a pile and move stones um, are these people on drugs da, 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 da. it sounds like they might a be heap on of drugs. stones in a field should not be disturbed though needed for building especially if they are a part of an ancient tumulus the fairies are said to live inside the pile and to move the stones would be most unfortunate when do uh, you, i'm you, like on reddit right yeah but now, you like, so it's uh, do you really believe that though i kind of i don't know i mean like i've always believed in fairies since i was a little girl i don't know but it's a whole, I mean, I'm like looking at it now, uh, apparently mostly in um, a lot parts. of the things that are, no, a lot of the oh. things that are popping up are Ireland. Yeah, Irish. It's like an Irish fairy yeah. tale. Fairy tale. I back to you. <laughs> yes, thanks. <laughs> um, on September 22nd, 2012, 53-year-old Lin- Linda Artega was hiking along with her 56-year-old brother, Eddie Huff, in the forest of the Arkansas Ozarks. Um, near the town of St. Joe and all and near the town of St. Joe. Also, just gonna say really quick that that's where Catherine literally was missing. The uh-huh. little the little girl who said, Here I am. Wait. St. Oh, Joe. Oh fuck. Oh fuck. It's in Ozark. Okay, wait, what year is this? This is 2012, right? Mine yes. was in 1946. Let's go. Alright, so the brother returned and claimed to have seen his sister um at a relative's house and that she was safe in reality she was nowhere to be found a large search was launched and artega was fortunately found that day in the woods but the circumstances surrounding the whole thing um would become more bizarre so are you ready for this Uh, i don't know let's go when she was questioned on what happened artega could not recall how she had been separated from her brother she did mention that she thought um he had been hurt somehow and that she had tried to um find help for him as she had walked along, she claimed that she had come across other hikers, but all attempts to communicate with them wasn't working. She said that uh, they couldn't see or hear her at all. She also said that she could see other shadowy figures who seemed to be hiding from her in the woods, saying, these people were hiding in the bushes. These people were weird people. Very weird people. Shadow people. One of the searchers who found Ortega, um, who's a deputy named Dwayne Pierce, said that when they found her, she wasn't quite um herself uh, uh i have this is my last one okay Alyssa marie mccrane was 37 from portland oregon she disappeared while on a run near the um Maltanamo falls in uh columbia george on saturday december 19th 2015 oh no that was like yesterday the falls are around a 30-minute drive from Portland. Uh, authorities say um, they were informed on Monday, December 21st, that Alyssa didn't show up for work at Sunshine Dairy. Her cell phone was last used around 10 a.m. on December 19th to make a Facebook post, but after that, her calls went to voicemail. The phone last pinged on Cascade Avenue in Teagard around a 45-minute drive to the falls. Her 2011 Mazda CX-7 was found was found parked at the Multnomah Falls parking lot on December 22nd after Alyssa left her home located in the Powellhurst Gilbert neighborhood. She lived with her parents and her 13-year-old son and had um, no known medical or health issues. A couple reported possibly seeing her on Saturday afternoon. 
around 3 p.m. near Franklin Ridge. She was wearing running clothes and she was bad, no food or water with her and was not wearing um, suitable gear for cold weather. The couple reported po- um, possibly, I feel like this is alleged, allegedly speaking to her and advised her to head back to the car, but she ran off in the trail and disappeared. According to OutdoorProject.com, uh, this is a quote from them. The Franklin Ridge Loop hike is a great option for hikers looking to link up the heavily trafficked, well-known waterfalls um, along the creek with uh, lots of miles. It is also a good transition from the area's easier hikes into more difficult hikes. Um, over 100 searchers searched over 150 miles of the trails in the gorge, focusing on um, Franklin Ridge, but n- found nothing. Dogs were used but failed to pick up any scents. Uh, Crews, mm, a reoccurring theme right crews say that they had a plane fly over an area but the pilot found no signs of her anywhere the search was suspended on thursday december 24th due to the dangerous weather conditions the sheriff's office consulted with a wilderness doctor um from an ohsu hospital in the portland police bureau's missing persons unit before deciding to suspend the search and she's never been found. Um, on Saturday, 23rd, oh. 2016, the search for Alyssa was resumed, which police classified as a recovery mission. 60 volunteers took part, but again, no luck. The Facebook page dedicated to finding her posted an update after weeks, um, after the weekend the search ended. Basically saying, like, thank you so much um, for participating. Right. We really miss her. Um, thank you for everyone that helped. Right. And um, there has no, be- there has been no trace of her anywhere. Ugh, fuck, man. Okay. Um, before we get into the connections, that that was a really good one to end on because just a reminder. I mean, before we get literally into any like left field conspiracy theories, just a reminder that these are real fucking people who have real fucking families. Who, a lot of them, well, uh, pretty much all of them, don't know exactly what happened to to their loved ones like i can't imagine like so let's just keep that in mind while we while we dive into some of these um before we get into the theories i want to talk about some of the connections Mm -hmm. also hold on i'm just going to show you guys this doesn't matter because it's a podcast but i'm just going to scroll through some of the people who are missing and this is all just from national parks see these are names that is so fucking insane these are names we're okay i'm looking at a number i see 419 okay oh oh, we're about halfway through the page babe so, uh, and a but lot like, cause I mean, when I think about it, like when you told me that you guys were doing this topic, I'm like, okay, think it, I woods. think about just like a regular, because for my experience, you know, like I grew up in suburbia, like real close to the city, not really woodsy. So my envisionment of a park is not what these national, national parks park. are like national parks are acres on acres on acres of on like acres woods on, and of and real shit and exactly also, also wildlife so we're not we're not saying no wildlife we're gonna get we're gonna address that like a real um, time so wildlife. really real quick uh we're gonna talk about connections but there was a guy who was a fan of the missing 411 books and he actually took like 360 degree panoramic shots like interactive pictures of where some of these people oh, were missing including oh, no the little girl who said here i am <gasps> like he stood right where she was found so you can stand where she's at is yeah, there I'm, a pattern um there's uh, i'm gonna get into some of the connections but i'm just saying i'm going to post that uh that link on all of our social media so make sure you guys are following us um because you can click and it's really almost eerie i don't know it makes me uncomfortable to be like wow in 1946 this girl who looked like that appeared uh, appeared out of nowhere and said here i am i mean i'm glad she's okay but i'm just saying creepy okay what happened like what were the effects of that like especially because like Like, so are they now it's like you're susceptible when you're really young but then it comes full circle again when you're older so it's like how was she when right she was like an old woman right or if she's still alive 1946 she was like Six she, and she old. was young so she yeah, could she be, was, yeah yeah she could, um okay so uh, now not a lot of the ones that sarah and i brought up have these connections but if you look into a lot of the cases these are some solid connections so um a lot of the bodies were found near bodies of water uh and they were not exactly drownings like there's nothing that really said that they were drownings but a lot of the odd 
autopsies were just like, yep, they drowned. That's it. Close there was but one, they were just near bodies. There yeah, was right. one I, story what? I found of this man. I forgot his name, but um, he was found in the lake. But like his shoes were in neighbors' mm-hmm. yards. No, he oh. was frozen. No, but they, the lake was. not Yes, I saw that one. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, is it possible for a lake to be? Like, like below like a body true. temperature and not freeze. for a human because now, but okay. the thing is lakes don't flow right like that's only what, yeah the i was gonna say flow. i don't know if it was a lake or if it was a river but i think it might have been a lake i would have to look more into it because they people were saying that that was weird but like if it was a river then he would have reason to be frozen because you know a river is flowing right. so it's not it freezing yeah freeze well it could but have like, like a lake is just top, stagnant water i don't know i'd have to look into it for the most right. part um okay so so there's a thought uh also no scent trails that the dogs can follow uh some of the but pause that explains like okay they're saying water but that explains that because water would disintegrate any right. type of unless it was evidence. a fucking alien That's right true. true uh also oh, these are such bad connections because none of our either of our stories really have them but i swear there are multiple we can honestly do we'll find yeah them. we can do more <laughs> we can do more episodes on different fucking people but a lot of them had to do with berry shrubs and people picking berries with their families and Listen. that's what people oh and missing. hallucinating okay. Okay, wait. No, they weren't eating the berries. They were just like picking berries oh, and fairies. Blood. Listen, Fair, berry fairies. I swear to you, listen. These fairies be out here okay. Look, manipulating. Buffy, Buffy's interested in what you're saying. She, she's like, no, you're on it, bitch. Right. She's like, I she's know. right here. Like, bitch, you already <laughs> know these fairies be out here. Okay? Either that or she's like, shh, don't tell them. Right, right. She's like, bitch, shut the fuck um, up. Okay. So- <laughs> And the, <laughs> the people who are found alive have memory loss and none of them know what the fuck happened. And they're all disoriented. Yes, Listen, exactly. Because they've been partying with fairies. The fairies get them fucking drunk. I literally just read a thing while you were talking about how fairies um, or people used to dress their little boys up as girls to like throw the fairies off. And so they wouldn't like take them. And apparently fairies would take people and like give weak fairies back as like what the human looked oh, like no. and uh, like that's why they would be disoriented and like not know what the fuck was going on because they would give them back like some someone some, from their some dark shit yeah i'm gonna lend you my tinfoil hat L- listen i'm, I'm, I'm about it about it. About, right. it about it okay <laughs> been about it <laughs> all right so um also no single race has been narrowed down it's pretty much they be snatching any bitch up uh no specific age children versus older people also no specific mental capability they've been taking able-bodied people disabled people mentally disabled people deaf people i don't know i feel like the they like, really like i feel like your children shit was like popping off i feel like they've been on yeah, children at least yeah uh so when this missing 411 documentary was being filmed they the secretary of interior which would be the guy who's kind of in charge of overlooking the shit uh during obama's term his name was ken well it still is but ken salazar and they asked him if he had any public records of any of this stuff and he said i do not recall <gasps> and they said he was being really creepy and really yeah, fucking short with he it. knows what the fuck is up they, i honestly feel like no one in the government actually knows what the fuck is going on. I do. Oh, I think they, I, do. they do. I feel like they know to a certain extent of like, I know shit's popping off, but we're not about to release that and cause like hysteria. Oh, amongst yeah. the I think they know people. what's going on though. I, I don't know. know. I feel like it's everything. either they know what's going on on a type of shit where they're doing experiments or they don't know what the fuck is going well, on see, and they can't I'm explain saying, it like, and they okay. can't. Let's say it is your fairy theory. I think they know about them. Let's say it's like that uh, Netflix series. Well, that's Dark. what I'm saying. That's why They're I said Area 51 like, earlier because I'm like, they know about something. They know. Okay. But it's either they are like keeping it a secret or they don't know exactly what the fuck is going on. So they're still experimenting yes. and trying to figure shit out. Okay. I'm going to read two last quotes and then we can pop off with our theories. Yeah. Okay. So we're these... out to get you government. <laughs> K- Kiko no, made it clear she thinks it's fairy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So these last, uh, these are from David, uh, Politis, And he said, it is something straight out of X files. He said, quote, folks, I have never given you a theory. I have given you a series of facts. What happens if I come out and tell you it's that? And then the next day, somebody comes out to prove that it can't be that. My credibility is shot. It would be easy to come to a rational explanation on many of the cases. With a background of hundreds of exactly the same cases, 
the perspective changes, end quote. So and he who has was that? Who said that? The guy who wrote all these books, who coll- David Politis, the guy who pretty much wrote Missing 401, collected all of these things. He said, I'm giving you the facts and I'm not saying what I think it is because right. he wants to stay as credible as possible because if he starts saying things like... Because people are say- scientists, right. okay. quote unquote. Yeah, I'm not going to say... I'm not yeah. calling you out, but I'm just saying like if if he were to say it was fairies no, then right. people would come out and just be like what the oh, fuck that's not real because not this only is that, plausible yeah, not, not only that but they would totally forget all of the names they would be like how do we even know that any of this is real because you're saying this I'm not believing and it and they would I'm... focus on exactly, right exactly. exactly exactly okay so theories uh, one is animals in the last hundred no. years in the last hundred years <laughs> there have been the last hundred years there have been 14 mountain lions attacks in the united states and canada combined okay, but none of us had like there's you re, you leave blood trails you leave right like, that's what i'm saying there's only been 14 in the last hundred years in u.s and canada uh, and that's what i'm also saying because animals like i was saying before animals act in a very specific way right, like right. i was talking to sarah about how like cats do this thing where they always bite because that's just how they play instinctively right like, and also they're ha- like animal attacks especially mountain lions go for the stomach yeah. no nope, none of the clothes that were found were shredded and there was no blood like, all these people were missing not a drop of blood not a drop of blood and especially a mountain anywhere. lion that bitch would have dragged somebody yes. like somewhere absolutely okay so another uh thought is human sex slave trafficking oh true. so this one i only think about the story that you brought up about the boy walking around the car in yeah. the parking lot because he honestly god forbid but like he could have gotten snatched really fucking quick same with um sarah's last story in 2015 that happened right so yeah that was another thing i wanted to bring up is that it's possible that yes all these weird things happened to happen in or near very very close proximity to a national park but it's not out of the box to say that it had nothing to do with any government thing or any yeah. anything far-fetched any fairies it could just be a fucking creepo those people could still unfortunately be out there and right. like locked in some creepo's basement right because like correct me if i'm wrong like with national parks you can still like camp there and like do your whole thing and, i like... think it depends because i know the K- valley forge it, here in pennsylvania you're the it closes but a lot of oh. them have campgrounds but in Valley Forge, they're actually really fucking strict, and you cannot be on the grounds when sun when the sun goes down. Oh well, I mean, good because yeah. they know what's up. Mm-hmm. Um. So another okay, here we go, guys. Get your tinfoil hats. Aliens. Now you yeah. said Kiko. Fairies. You said, you said Area Fifty One. What if Area oh, Fifty One is Area Fifty One, and all these national parks are Area Fifty, Area Forty Nine, right. Area Forty Eight, well, Area Forty Seven, Area Forty Six. Because, like, listen, I really don't care. Like, the universe is so fucking huge, and we are just one small galaxy and universe within, like, however many. Like, I honestly, we really don't know what's going on at all. We don't. We have no fucking idea what's going on. All I know is I need some. Area 51 is only a taste. Chapstick. Me what? fucking too. I'm, I'm dry, fucking. bitches. <laughs> uh, yeah, so aliens, people are thinking they get abducted. People think that uh, the government knows about this and they kind of are... They sweeping it under the in, rug. Well, not, no, 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 not sweeping it. Well, they're hiding it under the rug, but they're in cahoots with the aliens and they're just like, hey, if you want to take anybody, this is our land. Yeah. We can't track people. We'll turn a blind eye if you want to snatch a bitch up. I also, like, yeah, you know that, that girl, um, Marina Ambrovic? Um, yes she is like abramovic yeah abramovic she is like she's friends with james franco yeah and she's also and she's also friends with the kardashians and And gwen stefani yeah yeah you know she's in with them oh we need to that's a whole fucking episode girl i could go off on her there's a conspiracy theory that she collects kids for blood to keep herself younger she's looked the same for like 30 years i could go off on this because um what's her name that lived in New Orleans, the not in Transylvania. I'm not sure where it is, but there was a countess that used to do that back in the day and would like t- like collect her handmaids pretty much and like bathe in their blood as long as they were virgin. But then in New I'm Orleans, oh my god, <laughs> in New Orleans, it's fucking um, 
like bleed her handmaids dry like or at least if they were a virgin bleed them dry and use their blood in her baths and as like is who you're thinking of delphine lalori yes i don't i don't know if she actually did that i thought that that was just for the show i don't know no no that's like an actual thing okay yeah she was like she literally would collect slaves that's why they use it um in american horror story well no i know that but i don't know about the blood part Oh, no, the blood part was a thing. Oh, God. That's why she, yeah, yeah, she would, like, torture slaves. Um, but I need to figure out what this countess's name is. Um, Bro, we need to know. I know. Fuck, I'm okay, so Okay, you sorry. look it up. We're going to, okay, I'll yes. keep going, but we. I want to know. No pressure. But also, listen, because we still want your input. I was talking to you about her before. Elizabeth Barath- yes. uh, Bathory. Elizabeth Bathory. Countess Elizabeth Bathory. Noble woman and alleged serial killer. Let me see. Oh, she's scary. Uh huh. Oh Slovakia. My- Slovakia was where uh, she was committing her crimes, and they literally named her the Blood Countess. And like in history, she is known for that. Like, oh, for there's bathing yeah. In blood. Oh, wow. Yeah, and it's like a whole thing. Like bathing in uh, virgin's blood is supposed to not supposed to, but please don't these do bitches at home. think right <laughs> that bathing in virgin's blood will keep you. Younger, young. your skin yep. looking mm-hmm. young. That's okay, what she also, does. Also, there's there's the. I mean, I'm not saying to do that. Don't fucking do that. But also, there's the whole thing about like stem cells and younger yeah. blood. That's it, they think it is scientifically possibly possible to stimulate you know younger growth on parts of your body. Not that that has anything to do with it. These people are missing. I'm just we're just kind of falling off. Right. Here. Um, okay. Really quick. Going to go on to another theory would be time slips. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if you would like a whole fucking episode on this, please let your bitches know. <laughs> I'm so I'll serious because I love this theory. Basically, um, Sarah Did and you I, like Donnie Darko? I loved Donnie Darko. <laughs> I loved sure it. Did. I really did. Um, so it, to something of that sense, yes, it's a very complicated thing. Is this yours or mine? It's mine. Um, to a complicated theory to think about, but uh, Sarah and I covered a story. I think it was my story. It was one of our first ones. It was like episode five or something. Mm-hmm. It was a UFOs where it was three people who were living in a trailer together. And one of the girls went like missing and there was like uh, a burned bush outside of their house and like a broken window near the burned like bush. Jesus? Like No, 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 no. A burned bush as if like, a beam of light pulled her out of the window and the beam of light burned through the bush. The whole bush wasn't burned. It was just like a little sliver of it. And you can see on the news, I've watched, I physically watched with my own eyes, like what it looked like. It was some crazy shit, but she claims that she was like probed by aliens. They ended up finding her miles away. Her fingernails had grown. They found her hours later. Her fingernails had grown. Her hair had grown. Yeah. I heard about that. I told you about that. It was in our episode. Oh, no, but I'm saying like in, okay, yes, fairies, but also aliens, yas. No, it's because a, that shit is fucking real. Okay, and and but like imagine besides, like the technology bes- that they have to use. Right, to but like, I'm sa- besides the alien theory, I yes. understand, but I'm saying time slips. So there's like a possibility that like, I'm just using that as like a, a, a some something to like base that off of. But the fact that that was a time slip for her, possibly, allegedly. You guys, are you still here? Are you still listening? I'm, I'm because here. she went off with the quote unquote aliens. But I'm saying a time slip could have been like these national parks could be national parks because there are secret portals that right. so and so knows or not about. Beacons, but yes, uh, that portals. you know these people slip into, and it happens to like bends the the time continuum, and it's just some crazy fucking shit. Which is why I people would, don't remember things. Yes, like, I would love to do an episode and how that one little kid got thirty miles away, 20, 30 miles away. As a child with no shoes on, I, you guys, we're going to fucking end up doing an episode about that at some point because it's fascinating. Literally. Also, another thing. It's insane. It's so crazy. Another, another theory is Bigfoot. I don't know how to expand on that. Sasquatched. Yeah. Uh, okay. But do you guys have anything else to say about the topic before we move on? No, I, I, I just, honestly, like, there's I so know. much that it could I be. feel like I could go on and on about this topic. <laughs> okay. <laughs> But again, I just want to remind. But. <laughs> but, but again, I just want to remind everybody that these are like as far fa- you know these weird situations happen, and I find myself guilty of this, like removing humanity from that mm-hmm. victim and just kind of looking at it as, oh, this person went missing and it's crazy because nobody knows what happened. It was under weird circumstances, right. but it's still no a one can person. It. Yeah. But it's still a person. So I, I just want to, you know, as we say again, know it. It's they're still a person. Right. Well, not, I mean, like they were a person. 
person mm-hmm. that went missing that had family and shit. Uh, you guys, we want to hear your fucking opinions. If you want to read up on it, we got all the links. Uh, please read up on it. Um, and we're going to get to our Tweet of the Week and Fun Facts after we take this quiz to find out what national park are you. And if you guys want to take the quiz with us, please feel free. I'll read the first question. Pick your spirit animal. It says otter. You otter pick me. <laughs> Is that what it says? Are- yes. I sent it to you. Wait, oh, check where? your check your email. Oh. Uh, okay, so we've got an otter. We've got a bunch of buffaloes. We've got a crow, a crocodile, a deer, or mother goose. Uh, for myself, I'm going to say I'm probably a deer. I think I'm an otter. I'm a deer or a crow? I'm probably a deer because I'm a fucking dumbass and run out in the middle of traffic. I'm going to say, damn, I'm kind of stuck between buffalo and crocodile. What did you say you were going to do, Jack? I was going to do a crow or a deer, but I chose the deer. And what are you doing, sir? Otter. An otter. Otter. I'm going to do buffalo. Okay. All right, Sarah, do you want to read the next one? Yeah. You're going to have to describe the pictures. Which path would you follow? It's um, like orange rocks, like the tall ones. The next one is <laughs> Sarah, like... On. Wait, wait. Hold on. I have like Colorado-looking rocks. Okay, yeah. Like well, red rocks. Yes, I love it. Um, The next one's like a trail with a lot of trees. Another one looks like a cave with some snow and some skiers. The trail with the trees has a city, though. So it's like it looks like a city with a possible beach and like a body of water nearby. No. Where? Yes. That's a road. Which one are you looking at? That's a city. It's a road. Oh, no, no. She's looking at it's literally like the. Oh, woods is it? Is it different? Yeah. Is it different than mine then? No, it's the same one. It's just this one. Oh, wait. Oh, there's so, more. Yeah, yeah. So I think mine's in a different order. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. I got confused. So, too. yes, body of water, city, and a road. The other one is a bridge over a. <laughs> Whoa. A lake with some seam. And then it's a we hot have, spring, maybe? Um, a trail. Like just a woodsy trail. You know, I'm going to go with these red rocks here. Uh, yes, it's like, yeah. There's I'm red go- rocks, icy cave. It looks like Washington, D.C. <laughs> Redwoods. I'm going to go with the redwoods. I'm going with redwoods, too. All right, Kiko, read the next one. And then our next one is what sport gets you going? <laughs> Hand can. gliding and sh- extreme fan <laughs> I did hiking that, i did that in new orleans extreme yeah. extreme yeah oh it's fan it's it's a fan in the back of the boat yeah i know no, that's the they go on the bayou with um, the fan boats yeah i went on it with dina from jersey shore i remember you telling me that <laughs> okay uh hiking mountain biking jogging in the park who's or jogging ice climbing. in the park now right. that all that shit happened it's like i want to do extreme <laughs> fan boating but like what makes it extreme like <laughs> It's scary. When doing? they go fast, it's scary shit. I'm going to do jogging in the park. I'm gonna, did you just fart? Ooh. <laughs> we got some rootin' tunes it in here. It sounded like a vibration. I'm going <laughs> to Who was s- doing ice climbing? Honestly. I'm going to say hiking. I'm going to say hiking, too, actually. Okay. Um, like, what even? Who is your hero? A frozen mountain climber, Conrad Anker. Don't know him, but I'm sure he's great. Uh, John Muir and Teddy Roosevelt. Uh... Are yours in the same order no, as mine? I don't think so, no. Okay, the National Park Rangers, Superwoman Rachel Powell, <laughs> Honest Abe, or the McGalvery Freeman film oh, yeah, crew. Rachel Pohl. I'm sorry, Rachel Pohl. I'm sorry. Powell? I don't know. Um, who is your hero? I don't know. I guess it's I don't know any of them. Rock. Yeah, Superwoman. Yeah, she looks like Always. she knows what she's doing. I hope she's a good person because we I really can't. hope so. Oh, oh Sarah, God. you have to describe these pictures again. <laughs> <laughs> what tree calls out to you? That There's looks like a red Why are you so tree? angry? <laughs> I'm pissed. Then Kiko can do it. We have to, okay, so we have like a red branch redwood tree. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Sarah goes, so we have a branch. He <laughs> <laughs> goes like redwood tree. Redwood tree. Like she's redwood. like she's like Sarah wait, Jessica Sarah, Parker and I'm trying focus, to help. Focus. Why don't you describe Dead man's toe, dead, dead man's toe. toe. Dead man's toe, dead man's toe. Okay, so we have like we have a Hawaiian horizon like sunset palm trees. We have cherry blossoms. We have like a desert type thing desert blossom going on we have like a salmon river lake type deal and then we have some redwood trees and that then looks like ice i don't on think a that, cave that looks much. like a fucking with the smoke coming out i think that's a um you a know i'm picking spring. the red rocks oh again. yes it looks like a um 
It does look like a hot I'm gonna, No, I'm picking the red rock. I'm going to pick cherry blossoms. Ba- Stop it. That's Get out of here. I was going to pick cram. that too, but... <laughs> but nah, All it right. ain't for me. Sarah, Sarah, you do the next one. Which rock rocks? <laughs> These rocks disguised as lily pads. This rocky staircase. The sculptured rock. This frosty rocks. The carved <laughs> rock. And the hoodoo rocks. You know I'm picking the hoodoo rocks. I'm picking the These hoodoo rocks. These are problematic. Why are they named this? <laughs> I don't know. I'm going to pick that too though. <laughs> I love like the red rocks. I've picked every red rock so far. Every, I picked every red rock in this bit. What's okay. your mental oh. state? Okay, so Listen, what, these know. frosty oh. rocks. What is your mental state? So we're we've got totally in awe, jumping for joy. Yeah, we're not about to explode. <laughs> barely, barely, barely hanging, hanging on. on. Barely hanging on. <laughs> people. I check that fast oh. as fuck. We are all talking over each other and spiking Ooh, these levels like crazy. Uh, just cruising or reflective? Oh. Uh, I'm gonna say I'm just cruising. I'm picking reflective. All right, I'm going to say who I am. I got Utah. No, wait, what did you pick? I told you I picked barely hanging on. You didn't? Okay, so, uh, wow, okay. So go ahead, read us yours, yes. Sarah. Yes, Kiko's not going to like this. You are all the okay. national parks in Utah. Utah is home to five incredible national parks. Much like the state, you also have a diverse um, collage of characteristics that you cannot be confined to a single park drawn to the pioneer spirit and exploring of other worldly red rock and hoodoo ridden landscapes of Utah. You find yourself at home among new and unknown experiences. That is okay. you though. Yeah, that is you. I like that for you. Yay, thanks. Who did you get? So I got Yellowstone. Okay. Ooh. Mine if you says, explode, we're all fucked. Oh, God, I know. The seriously. world is fucked. Literally, though, my emotions are on the wire. <laughs> you are Yellowstone National Park. Yellowstone is home to hundreds of guy- geezers? geysers. Geysers? Geysers. Geysers. Included geezers. <laughs> Wait, just, are those old people? Just this is, a whole bunch of old cute. people. You sorry, you're question. yelling into it. Oh, I'm good. sorry. You're good. Um, Yellowstone is home to hundreds of, uh, we said geysers. Geysers. <laughs> including the she famous. Said geysers. <laughs> including the famous Old Faithful and spans three uh, U.S. states. You also find yourself at home in multiple places. That's true. Look. And need a regular dose of excitement in your life. Cute, right? That is me. I, Sarah just showed me a picture of uh, Yellowstone. Um, <laughs> you also find yourself at home, in quotes, in multiple places and need a regular dose of excitement in your life. Much like the regular eruption of Old Faithful, you are prone oh, to... <laughs> Ooh, eruptions. You are prone to roam like the great American bison and others are inspired by your adventurous spirit. Wow. Mm, that was a long one. Good for you. Was, thank you. Oh my god, Kiko, you're gonna love this. Oh god. I got god. Yosemite. Stop it, Yosemite. <laughs> <laughs> Yosemite. Wait, I, stop. I was looking things up and I said it like Yosemite. Because <laughs> how the fuck are you supposed to know to say Yosemite? <laughs> okay. I don't give a Can fuck. Can I have some hyphen? No. <laughs> some <laughs> right, I'm saying. Kiko and I just talked about this like an hour ago. Oh, I'm, this is beautiful too. Okay, mm-hmm. so I got Yosemite. So you are Yosemite National Park. Yosemite is nestled within the famous Range of Light Sierra Nevada Mountains. You are a positive influence on those around you, shedding a positive light in every situation much like the raised view gained by a hiker from the top of half dome or a bird perched in the canopy of a giant sequinonia uh, yes get it you too see things from an elevated perspective do we think that that's true yeah i think you see things yeah. from an elevated perspective i definitely do to an extent yeah i think yeah maybe <laughs> maybe wow. i'm yosemite uh, okay, I've got a tweet of the week and a fact, and Sarah's got something really fucking important she wants to share with you. I so, so my, um, oh, oh, okay. So my tweet of the week, I'm sure everybody's already seen it, and by the time this comes out, everybody's over it. Did you just fart again? Love I that. can't stop. I'm ripping them. <laughs> I've got them too. <laughs> so this is from at Mariah Carey. Oh, she gosh. said, "I don't get this ten year <laughs> challenge." Time is time is not something I acknowledge. And then an asterisk that says picture taken at some point prior today, and it's two pictures side by side. It's the same fucking picture of her taken 
that day on January 16th, 2019. And then my fun fact is the bagpipe was originally made from whole skin of a dead sheep. Oh, God. Um, my <laughs> tweet of the week is not a tweet, but it's a person. Um, follow my friend Glennis Johns um, at Black Scranton on Twitter. It's focused on hidden histories and contributions of um, Scranton's black community that most people don't know about. So it's really cool. And she's doing a lot of great things in my town. And I just think it's really um, nice of her to do these things. Love her. Can you spell it for us? What? Can, so people know how to. At B-L-A-C-K-S-R. Ooh, I already fucked Yeah, up. that's what I'm saying. People don't know how to spell Scranton. At, at B-L-A-C-K-S-R. C R A N T O N. Yes. Yes. That is I think I did it. <laughs> Yay. You guys, we're gonna leave her stuff um in our stuff. So go go follow her. That's that's fun. And also support your friends. That's fucking important. And speaking of supporting your friends, thank you, Kiko, for being here with us. Thank you, and we're gonna Kiko. post all thank of her you for shit. Dealing with we my sure are. and giggles. Uh, <laughs> oh wait. <laughs> you guys have probably already heard her. She's I think this is your third or fourth time on the yeah. show. Uh, actually, probably more than that because we had to re-record some shit that we recorded with <laughs> yeah. you before. It's fine. But, um, because of my laughter and giggles. <laughs> she's got a fantastic page. She's got multiple fantastic pages. <laughs> but uh, one of them is the Afro Witch. And you should go check her out. She's got some very fucking inspiring, very intriguing, yes. very thought-provoking, yes. very inspirational things going on. And she uh, posts very deep, thoughtful things oh God, that I think everyone you. can yeah. relate to, especially... The Black Witches. Yes. If you want to get in the thick of it, follow my page. I love storytelling and speaking my truth. So. I love it for yes. you. So thank you again. And thank you guys for listening. If you could uh, subscribe to us wherever you're listening to us and also give us a good rating. It really helps us out. It helps other people find us. Uh, also, we've noticed uh, another little spike in our listeners. So hi, welcome Sorry. new listeners. What's good? Hi, guys. No, not spike in our oh, audio. I was like, oh, <laughs> hi, guys. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and that was a spike in our audio. Thanks for listening, guys. We Thank love you. Thank you so much. Bye. <laughs> Bye. And that was a spike in our audio. I'm dead. <laughs> I'm sorry. I got a kick out of that. <laughs>